If we look at all these sanskars, these are related to four stages of life. Most of you must be aware that in the yogic tradition prescribed in all the Indian traditions as well, uh, we come across this notion of classifying the stages of life, very broad classification of stages of life. There are four stages of life as being conceived, uh, Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyas. Brahmacharya is the time of studies, preparing our mind and body to be the valued member of the community and society. Grahastha is the life of householder. Householder's life is responsible for hold, taking care of all other sanskars because that is the stage where earth which is the very important uh, uh, which is one of the four purusharthas which we discussed in the last uh, session. Uh, earth is mostly created and circulated through the grahastha ashram uh, in the life of a householder where they aim at raising family and also taking care of the society and prosperity of the society. Third stage in life is called vanaprastha. Vanaprastha literally means going to the forest that symbolically means delegating the responsibility and is starting to delegate the responsibility of the household to the kids, taking, giving the responsibility of the ashrams to the uh, younger householders, giving responsibilities of different types to the younger people. So, that is the third stage. This stage is considered to be active in the society. This is about taking the role of a person who is not only performing duties, but he is or she is also preparing the next generation to perform the duties in the best possible ways. So, that element of dedication, delegation, contributing to society, contributing to the larger system for the benefit and development of its own, not for the personal benefit alone or not only for the benefit of the family. These are some of uh, these are some of the characteristics of vanaprastha. Sanyas is the uh, samnyas that means equality and equanimity in the perception that means moving beyond the likes and dislikes and dedicating ourselves to the last objective of the life which is called moksha. Moksha we discussed in the last uh, session that is described or explained in different languages, in the different types of yogic tradition. So, Bhakti Yoga describe uh, moksha in certain way, Karma Yoga describes moksha in certain way, Jnana Yoga also describes moksha in certain way. But ultimately, the objective of san sanyas uh, ashram is to make more concerted and focused effort towards the fourth objective or fourth purushartha of life. If we look at sanskar, the solar sanskar, the 16 sanskars, these are primarily aligned to the different stages of life. And these sanskars are primarily focused on brahmacharya and grahastha. There are very few sanskars uh, supposed to be conducted for vanaprasthi or sanyasi. Why so? Because by nature, meaning of sanskar is refinement or uh, making things sophisticated. This process is naturally required in the childhood and uh, when person is young. So, if you look at sanskars, they start from the beginning and beginning meaning even before the conception, uh, uh, the sanskars process start. So, we can take few examples uh, and the detailed discussion as I said will be conducted in, in the in, in a session which is primarily focused only on the sanskars uh, as a positive event for managing different stages of life. So, Garbadhan sanskar, 
this is performed at the proper time when couple are physically fit and in healthy condition. When they knew each other's heart and had intense desire for possessing a child. So, when couple is psychologically and physically ready to conceive a child, that is the time Garbhadhan Sanskar is conducted. Their whole thought of was to concert it towards the art of procreation and pure and congenial atmosphere was produced. So, the if you look at the mantras and the rituals, they are aiming at making the thoughts and mind clear and creating a congenial atmosphere. And that is done through different hymns, different sacrifices. After uh, uh, Churakaran or Tonsure, when child grew into a boy, his duties are prescribed and his responsibilities are explained before him. And that is done without in uh, encumbering his mind and body with book knowledge and school discipline. So, the Churakaran Sanskar makes child ready to take up the larger responsibility, make the child aware that he or she is not only the child of his or her parents. So, in this stage, a uh, child is made more conscious about his role in the family. So, Upanayan and other educational sanskars are form the great cultural furnace. Uh, of the emotions, desires and will of the boy. So, this description of sanskar is given in an extensive thesis of uh, Dr. Rajbali Pandey. So, this thesis is based on the research of uh, Dr. Rajbali Pandey uh, submitted in the late 40s and uh, he describes that Upanayan and other sanskars form the great cultural furnace where emotions desires and will of the boy were mandated and shaped and he was prepared for an austere, but a rich and cultured life. So, all the education related sanskars are making the child's mind and body ready to be the valued member of society. Then comes Viva sanskar. Viva was the code of eugenics that is what described in the Rajbali Pandeji's book and the nuptial ceremony about the life of a married couple. So, Viva Sanskar was a code of eugenics meaning a preparation of the healthy progeny and it was also a nuptial ceremony where they make the psychological contract about living together, enjoying things together and who will lead in what kind of matters in the uh, married life. The various uh, sacrifices, uh, rituals and vows are prescribed for a, host, uh, for a householder. Uh, they are introduced to remove selfishness clinging to one's individuality and make the couple, both the members of the couple to realize that he or she is part and parcel of the whole community. So, uh, if we look the rituals in detail, they are about making each others aware of the each others individuality and making them willing to sacrifice the individuality, making them more open to the likes and dislikes and also making them open to plan their life which can take care of all three other ashrams. So, Grahasthasram which has to take care of the Brahmacharya, Vanaprast and Sanyas, the whole societal arthic activities, the transactional activities, economic activities are all carried out by the householder. So, preparing the uh, new householders, the preparing the couple who is entering into the marriage life for this responsibility. So, sanskars are the positive events where along with fun and floric a positive message is given. That message is given in a very joyful way and that is also an occasion where whole society is uh, participating in the process.